Thank you. Hey, I've got to do something to earn my keep. How did I fail to realize until now? The members of Exodus are humans too. Of course they are. What, did you think they were monsters or something? No. Deep down I knew. But I cannot spare any who would use a Spyrex, no matter what or who they may be. Come on, let's get out of here. Everyone's waiting for you in Niakara. Wow, you really do keep this place tidy. What would you charge to clean my room? <laughs> it's all part of a handmaid's duties. And now I'll show you how a handmaid makes tea. It'll be just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Thanks, but you really don't need to. Oh, hi, Mila. Back so soon? Yes, we said all we had to say. Don't tell me they confessed their true feelings for you. <laughs> In fact, they did. Really? Wait, hold on. Don't worry. My path has not changed. Yeah, I trust you. All right. Back to it, then. That was a really cool sub of it. All right, twerps. Soon you'll be feasting your lips on the greatest tea you've ever tasted. And you'd better appreciate it, because... Huh? Where'd they go? Ah, all that premium tea wasted. This is going on your list of crimes, phony! Deserved. <laughs> Deserved. That was a really good event. That moment between Mila and Alvin and those kids that gave her that bead. Like, that was the- Mila said that was the one time where she acted like a human and just played around and it was with Exodus children, Exodus members. That was really good. Alright, uh, so wait, wait, wait. That was a different subquest. I found it on my spreadsheet. So we still need to get a cow, though? Where, oh, where am I gonna get a cow from? I assume there's just gonna be someone somewhere who I can talk with. Oh, there are also horses at, uh, probably right over here near these horses, maybe? There are also horses at Niakara. I think there are horses at Hamil, too, aren't there? I don't know. Uh, oh, right here, this guy's standing in front of a bunch of cows, that makes sense. You want me to send a cow to Hamil? If I can be of some use to Lord Maxwell and her companions, I'm more than happy to do it. I'll pick a real lively one for you and have it sent over to Hamil. What a nice guy. So, I think we're good in Neocara now. Back to Hamil. And then I have a couple of sea havens we need to go to that I saw on the spreadsheet while I was marking off that, uh, that sub-event. And we also still need to go back to Loron. Loron, have you say it. Thank you so much for finding that cow for us. It's not much, but we want you to have this as a token of our appreci appreciation. Words. Why is your husband, like, depressed? Mommy made cheese stew out of the cow's milk. It's yummy. That does sound yummy. Are you okay, Lauren? Oh, yes. There's just one thing I'd like your help with. What's up? We started growing Dodurians recently, hoping that they would be Hamir Hamil's, I can talk, Hamil's next major crop, like porringes and apples. The fruit is delectable, but the husk is like cast iron. Okay, so you called it a dough durian, but it's just a durian. No one wants to buy a fruit that they can't get open. Dough durians, huh? I think my dad used to make a dessert out of those. But I don't remember him having any trouble getting the husks open. Really? If you can find out how he got the husks open, please let me know. I'm sure if we ask my dad and Loran, he can tell us what to do. Oh, so now I have two- Oh, this is another sub-event on the list. It's just three sub-events in a row of doing all this stuff in Hamil. I see now. Alright, but we... This is good because we also have to uh, turn in the V-Call Mine quest. So we should just be able to do both right now and have it all done. 
You did it. Now we can get back to our regular lives. Here, take this. It's not much, but the other villagers and I want you to have it. Thank you. All right, so that was the old V-Call Mind bit. Yep. And now we need to talk to you about this other stuff. Dodurians? Ah, it's a tough nut to crack, all right. Even your mom can't bust them open by force. They're really good, but not many people grow them because of their husks. But they're easy to peel off once you freeze them solid with an ice art. Best of all, the ice turns the fruit inside into sorbet, making for a perfect dessert. How nice. Back to Hamil, I think, for the last time, at least for a little while. I think it was just... It looks like it's just three subquests in a row. For this Hamil... Stuff. Uh, where were we going again? How Let's did just I... calm down and check our objective. How did I do that perfect 180 right there? That was totally by accident. My hand just, like, my thumb flicked on the, uh... The left stick there for a second. That was, that was like, flawless. We found an easy way to peel off to durian husks. All you have to do is freeze the fruit with an ice art, and it turns into sorbet. That's brilliant! And freezing them would make them easier to ship and sell throughout the world. I'm gonna hire some people and start growing more right away. Right on, that's a great idea. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Thanks to you and Lauren's family, my hometown will be saved. It was our pleasure. It feels good to help out the village. Mission... Uh, I got a mini top hat, that's sick! All right, so that trio of Hamil quests are done. Uh, we have some sea havens to go to, and we also need to, we have two quests waiting for us back in Shandu, actually, it looks like. But first, sea havens. We need to go to Sapstrath. I think we need to go to Lakutum as well, but Sapstrath first. And I think we need to go to the inn. That's the Devil's Beast guy. Are you gonna spawn it? Okay, thank you. Oh, you don't have the mark, though. Wait a minute, where in the inn do I need to go? Oh, head near the inn for a cutscene after the stuff happens at Canblar is what the spreadsheet says. So, like, over here? Yo, fresh mutton! We haven't heard that all day yet. They must not like mutton in Canblar. Over here? There should be a cutscene somewhere around here. It said it was near the inn down here. No? Oh, there's something to check, though. A jet black feather. Even a single jet black feather helps a lot. I just really hope that when we get to the post game, we don't have to grind them. Hmm. It said I should just get a cutscene. I don't think I need to talk to anyone specific. After the events in Canbalar, head near the inn for a cutscene. Do this before clearing chapter two. Maybe it means a different set of events in Canbalar. There is another thing that happens in Canbalar later in the story, so maybe I'm just here a little early, actually. I might even DM Lone Wolf about that after stream and ask him if he remembers the specific. It might be something later. So, not this one right now. What else? What else? Got to get to Fenmont for that one. Not that one. We need to go to Lakutum Sea Haven because we have to turn in that top knot side quest because we got it from the Ifreed treasure. That dude was like down here, right? Yeah, there he is. I got your dang top knot. This is beyond my wildest expectations. Haha! -ha, I see there's still much talent in the world of top knots left to be explored. You have proven yourself worthy of receiving my life's work, the ultimate top knot. I present to you the Moe top knot. Moe? Oh no. It, it's just pigtails. <laughs> that's not a that's not a top knot. That's a different hairstyle, you buffoon. What are you on about? Uh, now we need to go to Shoundu. Oh, we need to talk to Carla again. Where is Carla at? Carla is back in the Shandu Inn, but she's on the second floor. Okay, we have at least three different things to do in Shandu. Let's go talk to Carla first. Those Hamil subquests went faster than I expected them to. I didn't realize they were just a chain of three pretty quick subquests. We might actually get to fly the Wyverns and get back to Fenmont today before the end of stream. It depends. We'll see how it goes. There's Carla. Oh, hello. 
Hello, Jude. Good to see you again. Hi, I'm Carla Outway. I'm Leia, Leia Rolando. Hey, I recognize you. I've seen you here in the city before, haven't I? Name's Alvin. I do get around. It's possible you've seen me before. What about yourself? You must be from out of town if you're staying at the inn. That's right. I'm from Canbalar. I haven't been home in a long time, though. Oh, we've been there. Not the most pleasant of trips. I'm sorry to hear that. Were you able to meet with King Gaius? We did. He's a stern man, but clearly very dedicated to his people. In a way, he was kind of amazing. Kind of amazing, yeah, but super scary. Why can't he just be nice to people? King Gaius didn't always used to be that way. Do you know about the Battle of Fezabel? Um, well... It was a battle fought on the Fezabel outback 20 years ago between Rashigal and Ajul. The battle only ended due to a giant tsunami. No one's sure why it appeared when it did. It ended up causing dramatic changes to the region's spirit climb. That's how it became Fezabel Marsh, with all its twisted marsh flows. Oh, right, right! That battle of Fezabel! Yup, it's all coming back to me. Wow, you actually remember? I'm kind of shocked. She is obviously lying. Hmm. You don't need to be embarrassed if you don't know. It's never too late to learn. Oh, Carla, you're so nice! You could learn a lot from her, Jude. Uh-huh. During that battle, Gaius led a battalion of Longdao soldiers, even though he was a member of a different tribe himself. At just 20 years old, he led his troops to victory against an entire regiment of the Rashigal army. He was also the first to sense the oncoming arrival of the giant tsunami. He advised the Longdao chief to retreat, but the chief couldn't bring himself to give the order. The tsunami ended up swallowing both armies and wiped out Gaius's entire battalion. So that's how he became the Henri fellow we all know and love. Gotta hand it to him, though. It is true that most folk want a strong leader to guide them. And he's certainly won the trust of his people. Gosh, Carla, you really do know all about history. Well, at least when it comes to King Gaius. Is there a reason for that? There just might be. See you later, everyone. What do you think she meant by that? I wonder. I know, because I played the game before. Plenty of heat between Carla and Gaius, huh? You make it sound so illicit. And poor sweet Jude's left out in the cold. Come on, you know that's not why I'm looking for Carla. Bet she's waiting in Shandu. You think I don't know that? Hey, Jude only has eyes for Mila, Alvin. How dare you insinuate otherwise? So we can talk to Carla again. We have two more events to talk to Carla. One of them is available right now, and then the other one will take a while, and apparently there's a cutscene right here. Well... Here we are at Shandu. Do you remember anything? Oh, okay. This is the uh, this is the subquest after we went to Hamil, and then I okay, yeah, I know where this is on my spreadsheet. When you ask it like that, it's way too much pressure. Don't feel like you need to force it, Elise. Hey, didn't Wingull use a booster too? Maybe he has some connection to Tipo. That's possible, although his booster seems to be a different type. Do you know anything about him, Elise? Only that Wingle scares me. Wait a minute. I think I know him. You do? I've got it! Wingle was in the laboratory! He was? I don't remember him being there. He used to be way thinner. He was the guy who was always in pain from the prototype side effects or something. You mean test subject number one? Sounds like we're getting somewhere. Wingle must have volunteered to be a booster test subject. The people at the laboratory said they could have never made Tipo without him. Could that mean that Wingle is my father? <laughs> Wingull said that the experiments had been humane, but can we really trust him? If nothing else, at least we know the experiments had a purpose beyond mere cruelty. 
I don't know if the game ever goes super deeper on this subject, but it sounds like Wingle went first to do like the dangerous experiment. And then based on the data they got from Wingle, they then did more humane experiments. Here's the other person I need to talk to. They then did more humane experiments on orphans like Elise, which is pretty in line with Gaius as a person because Gaius isn't like unnecessarily cruel to his people. Woo, I'm exhausted. That cargo looks pretty heavy. They're all books, and yes, they really are. Who knew paper could be so heavy? But if you buy some for me, it would really help lighten my load. What kind of books are they? Oh, I've got all sorts of rare finds, like this first edition of the Chronicles of Kresnik. This baby would fetch five million gold at auction, easy. Next, we have the fabled book of battle tactics from the legendary Ilbert the Conductor, titled The Complete Tactician. Hey, Rowan, will you sign it for me? Not only that, it's a limited edition that contains a supplemental volume of the Conductor's Poetry titled Mad Screams of Love! The Conductor's Poetry? Mad Screams of Love? How did that get on the market? You've got yourself a sale! <laughs> I love the way that Alvin points and is like, I'm in! Thank you very much. Wait! Surely all of us have done foolish things in our youths that we'd be embarrassed to confront today! Aren't we as adults supposed to turn a blind eye to such things in order to spare others from their shame? I've never seen Rowan like this. I'm ashamed to say it, but that only makes me want to read it all the more. I guess that makes me a child still. The only shame here would be abandoning that healthy, youthful curiosity in an attempt to seem more grown up than you are. Real men have to hold on to their childlike curiosity for as long as they can. Which is why I'm gonna indulge mine with this special edition copy of Rowan's masterwork. Sounds good to me. How cruel. Oh no, I'm so sorry. This book has already been sold to another buyer. Why did you offer it then? Someone in Sherilton who already paid in full. Oh, I wonder who. Oh my, that was a close one. Aw, you've broken my heart. I'm so sorry. Perhaps I could offer you a free copy of this book by way of an apology. It's an equal equally rare treasure itself. Enjoy. Oh, is this like a skill book? Like something for actual gameplay? What is this? It looks to be a long Dao dictionary from the great clan of Ajul. Never mind, it's not. <laughs> It's the same language that Wingle used after his booster-induced transformation. Oh, that was Long Dao. Sounds like that bookseller was pulling one over on us. If they're a great clan, why would a dictionary of their language be rare? Actually, she may not have been exaggerating much at all. You see, the Long Dao tribe operated under a dual caste system of governance. The upper and lower castes were divided not only by political power, but by cultural differences as well. Even among the upper caste, only a few high nobles were permitted to speak the clan language. It was a privileged reserve for the elite. So hello is Anului, please forgive me is hidden in. Ugh, linguistics just isn't my subject. I studied Long Dao during my time in the military, but just barely enough for light conversation. So what was Wingle saying? I wish I knew. Unfortunately, I have no way of knowing if I even heard what he said correctly. It does seem pretty difficult. Well, maybe we can help jog your memory. Jude. How would you say mad screams of love in Long Dao? Oh dear, and I was so sure I had successfully changed the subject. Let's see, mad, mad. You needn't actually look it up! <laughs> oh, poor Rowan. Poor Rowan. What are we at on time? We still have like 40 minutes actually. We have way more time than I thought today. Um, Let me scroll through my spreadsheet a little bit for a second here, Chad. We have a couple of subquests, but we have to get back to Fenmont first, which means going on the Wyverns. 